Now, contrary to what you might read or hear out there on the internet, these tomatoes right here are the easiest to grow, especially if you're a beginner gardener. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Thursday, March 30th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're talking potatoes and tomatoes, or as we like to say down here, taters and maters. So we need to check on our in-ground taters, probably need to heal those one more time. Then we're gonna plant some tomatoes, and I'm gonna tell you why these are the easiest tomatoes to grow. So today we're gonna to be working in one of our several no-till plots where we've been diligently working over the last few weeks to reduce our weed seed bank in this plot. And we've done a pretty good job. Looks pretty clean now. I think we've really reduced the amount of weed pressure that we'll have as things warm up. Gonna be planting some tomatoes right here. We've got those two rows laid off. We'll do that in a minute. First, we need to take care of these three rows of taters right here. So we've got three 30 foot rows of in-ground taters here, a different variety in each row. So we've got Baltic rose right there, Huckleberry gold in the middle. And I think this variety over here is called Prairie blush. I can't remember at the moment, but as you can see, they're all looking good. Had a little bit of burn from that late frost we had, not much. Plants kept ticking along and they're doing great. Now, when we looked at these a couple weeks ago, when they were still just little babies, I showed you how the sprouting was a little uneven in the beginning, but I also told you how the plants that were a little late to sprout would catch up with the others, and that's what we can see happening here. Those there may be a little smaller than those there, but they'll all eventually end up being the same size. So we've already healed these taters one time. You can see the soil mounded up around that row there. We did that a couple weeks ago, mainly to kind of protect these plants from that late last frost we were having. And it seemed to work, although it didn't get as cold here as it was supposed to get. But now, since then, you can see they've grown a good bit above that hill. And we need to heal them at least one more time, pull some more soil up around these plants. So we like to heal taters for a number of reasons. One, we seem to make more taters when we heal the plants, and that probably has a lot to do with where the taters are produced along the stem there above that seed tater piece that we planted. Number two, gives us some good in-row weed suppression because we just throw soil on top of those weeds, smother them out, don't have to worry about weeds between our tater plants there. Three, it's gonna keep our taters from being exposed to the sun and turning green if we get a hard rain and it washes away some of the soil. And then number four, it's actually gonna feed these tater plants when we heal them. Assuming you've got some nice healthy soil that has some nutrients in it, when you pile that soil up around those plants, roots form there, they can get those nutrients, and as a result, you have some nice healthy tater plants. And number five, healing is gonna allow us to cover up or bury this fertilizer when we side dress our tater rows. And everybody should know by now, and if that's not evidence, I don't know what is, but your taters just grow better when you fertilize them out of a dog's bucket. And if you can't find a dog's bucket where you live, just get you a white bucket, paint it red, and then paint a black G on it, and you'll be amazed at the difference it makes. So we've already side dressed these taters one time. We're about to do it again, and that will be all the fertilizer these tater plants will get. I usually heal my taters two times. I usually side dress them at each healing, so two applications of a somewhat balanced fertilizer. So this is Nature Safe 855, not completely balanced, but get something that's close to balance. That'll be good for your tater plants. So I'm gonna try to get a scoop here or so, and we're just gonna put this down right alongside this row here, and we'll come back and cover it up with a rake as we heal these taters. All right, so we got all three rows side dressed there. Now we're gonna take this big old rogue hoe here and just start mounding up the soil around these plants. All right, all right, all right. That there is about as good as I can do with the tools I have and the amount of dirt I had to work with there. And that's why, folks, when we planted these, I told you don't put your in-ground tater rows no closer than three foot apart. Because if you do, you'll run out of dirt to heal them with. 
And reason number six to heal your taters, it just looks really good once it's done. Now, believe it or not, there are people out there that like to heal taters more than I do. I know people around these parts who have little healing attachments on their tractors and they'll heal their taters up way tall, like two or three foot tall. My heels here are probably 18 to 20 inches tall and I've found that's usually good enough for me. But some people love healing taters, love using their tater healing equipment and they'll mound them up real, real tall. And besides giving them a little bit of overhead water, if we run into a dry spell, that's all these babies here are going to need. We just let them grow and grow and grow. And in another about month and a half, we'll probably be digging taters. So now let's switch gears a little bit and plant some maters right here in this same plot. So today we're going to be planting two rows of determinate tomatoes right here. And in a minute I'll tell you why these are the easiest tomatoes to grow, especially if you're a beginner gardener. Came out here earlier and laid a fresh new stretch of mainline tubing in front of this plot. Not going to be using drip irrigation on the taters there because like I said, they'll be done in another month and a half and they're not super thirsty compared to some of these tomatoes that we'll be planting. So we've already got our drip tape laid down in those furrows and hooked up to the main line. Now my first row is pretty close to those tater rows there, but that's going to be okay because those taters will be done before these tomatoes get rocking and rolling. And then I've got my second row six foot from that row. And you may be thinking, a six foot row spacing on tomatoes, don't you think that's a little too much? Yeah, it may be for some people, but for me, it works out really, really well. These determinate tomatoes get pretty bushy. These rows will fill in a lot once they get up and growing. And I know at some point I'm going to have to come in here and spray these at least once, maybe two or three times with an organic insecticide. And if the rows are too close together, I really can't get my wand up and down those plants very well so i like to spread my rows out with my determinate tomatoes give myself room to walk in there between the rows harvest and spray so i can coat the entire plant because that's the key when using organic insecticides so we've got a beautiful tray of determinate tomato plants here that we grew out in our greenhouse. We fed these well with AgriThrive fertilizer basically every time we watered up until about the last week, week and a half when I needed to slow them down a little bit. I told you all about that in the last video. Now we're not going to plant all these today. We really only need 30 plants here. So we're going to plant what we need and then we'll give away the rest. So we've got some beautiful tomato plugs here and today we're going to be planting two different varieties basically a variety in each row those varieties are red snapper and roadster those are my two favorite determinate tomato varieties we trialed a bunch of different determinate tomato varieties over the years these two are my favorite because they make a nice big tomato they're really disease resistant and they're really productive they're not the most productive that we've ever tried we have had some varieties that have outproduced them as far as number of tomatoes but when you combine size and the number of tomatoes these two varieties here red snapper and roadster always win now contrary to what you might read or hear out there on the internet these tomatoes right here are the easiest to grow especially if you're a beginner gardener so why are these determinate hybrid tomatoes the easiest to grow? Well, number one, they're really disease resistant. They'll hold up even if you live in an area where it gets pretty hot and humid and you'll get a lot of tomatoes before the heat and the disease and the insect pressure really starts to take its toll on the plants in the middle of summer. And secondly, these plants don't require a lot of maintenance once you get them up and going. They don't have to be pruned and they don't get very tall so they don't require some huge elaborate trellis they'll usually only get four or five foot tall you will need to support them somehow or another because the plants will get really bushy and they'll have a lot of tomatoes on them at one time but if you're just growing a few plants cages work just fine we'll be using the florida weave on ours for our 30 foot long rows and number three, these are a lot more forgiving. So let's just say you don't get your tomato plants in the ground quite as soon as you need to. Maybe you're a month, month and a half late on planting. You're still going to get some decent production out of these. 
So all we need to do before we plant our tomatoes is hook our water hose up here, get these drip lines inflated, because we'll use the emitter spacing on the drip tape to tell us where we're gonna be putting our plants. And then we'll probably put a little bit of that Nature Safe 855 wherever we're gonna be putting each plant. All right, so we have our drip system turned on, our drip lines are inflated. As you can see there, I don't know if you can actually see these emitters or not, but they're spaced 12 inches apart along this tape. You can see water coming out right there, right there, and right there. I wanna plant these tomato plants two foot apart. So I wanna put a plant beside every other emitter. Before we put the plants in the ground, I'm gonna put a little handful of this Nature Safe 855 beside every other emitter. So that'll tell me where I'm gonna to need to put my plant. So one plant there, scoot over two foot, another plant here, and we'll just keep working our way down the row. So why a two foot spacing and not say a one or three foot spacing? Well, like I said, these plants get pretty bushy. If you plant them one foot apart, they're probably gonna be a little too overcrowded, probably not gonna have good airflow among the plants there. Now, we like planting them two foot because we like the plants to be able to lean on each other a little bit. We'll have our Florida weave trellis, we'll have twine that will keep them from leaning from left to right. But along the row, forwards and backwards there, we need the plants to kind of support themselves and lean on each other a little bit. If you plant them three foot apart, they're not able to do that quite as well. So we want this to end up looking just like a big hedge row of tomato plants. So we'll start off by planting this red snapper variety in this first row. Now with indeterminate tomato plants, you can plant them as deep as you want them. I planted them a foot deep or more in the past. With these determinate plants, you don't want to plant these too deep because they're only going to get so tall. If you bury too much of the plant there, you're going to end up covering up some spots where some tomatoes would have formed. So we do want to plant them deeper than say we would peppers, but not super deep. So I'm just going to put this plug right down there by that tape and then I'm going to kind of mound the soil up around it just like that. Now we may come back and heal these a little bit more as they grow, but we don't need to plant them real, real deep. So we got one in there. We'll get a nerd in here, put that one two foot apart from that one, right where we put our fertilizer. And we'll just keep working our way down the row. We'll get this row of red snapper planted and then we'll put roadster all in that second row. And there we go. We got 30 plants in the ground in no time. Still got plenty of plants there to share. Now you'll notice I didn't cover up my drip tape between the plants there and that was done on purpose because that's where our stakes or our posts for our Florida weave will need to go. So I'll leave that exposed until we get our post in the ground. That way I don't drive my post through my drip tape. Makes it a little easier to set up my Florida weave when it comes time to do that. Now you'll notice when we planted those, we didn't put a fish in the hole beside each plant. We didn't put an egg in the hole. We didn't put eggshells in the hole. We didn't put tums in the hole because in my opinion, all that is baloney, 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 baloney. Now we're not gonna get into a discussion about blossom end rot here. We'll do that on a different video, but I would bet that most of you out there have plenty of calcium in your soils. So if you're getting blossom end rot, it's not an issue of whether there's calcium there or not. It's some other kind of plant delivery issue. Like I said, we won't get into all that here. We'll cover that down the road at some point. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Be sure to check out our affiliate links in the description below and go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. And if you wanna know more about the whole determinate versus indeterminate tomato comparison, be sure to check out this video right here, one we did recently in our greenhouse where we talked about the advantages and disadvantages of determinate and indeterminate tomatoes. Hopefully that will help you figure out which ones will work best in your garden. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.